Uh, I'm Rick Anzen, I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's really an honor to be able to present here today. Um, I'm working at the Medical Ultrasound Imaging Center, which is situated in the Radboud University Medical Center in Nijmegen. And at the Medical Ultrasound Imaging Center, we are, uh, I'm working together with a team of mainly technical uh, people with a technical background who work on the development of new ultrasound techniques uh, to improve diagnosis and also to uh, aid uh, or to use ultrasound and image-guided uh, interventions. Um, today I will present work uh, for uh, early detection of cerebrovascular risk. This work not just by me, but also by some of our PhD students. So, well, I guess this is uh, known to all of you. Stroke is a really big problem. It's the second cause of death in Europe and also a very large cause of disability. And the incidence is only expected to increase even further in the upcoming years. So um, it really is a big problem, not only for those people who suffer from it, but also uh, for the healthcare system. So the aim, or uh, my research goal, is to uh, have a technique which can predict which people are getting stroke. And for that, we need to know what causes stroke. And in 10 to 30% of uh, cases of stroke, the rupture of atherosclerotic plaques in the carotid artery is the, the, the problem. So here we see a plaque, it's in the carotid artery. Um, when it ruptures, there's a thrombogenic reaction, and this thrombogenic reaction can result in a blood clot, which blocks the artery, and then uh, leads to stroke. So actually what I want to do is detect which plaques are at a high risk of rupturing using ultrasound. What we, what we, most of you also know is that the pathology of plaques which have a high chance of rupture is, uh, the morphology looks different uh, for plaques with a high chance of rupture, vulnerable plaques. So they have a large lipid core and only a thin fibrous cap, and there's also often uh, macrophages involved. <laughs> and plaques which have a low chance of rupture typically have a high collagen content. Well, with ultrasound, we can image plaques uh, very good. Uh, so here you see a longitudinal view of the artery with a plaque over here, and a transverse view. So here's the plaque. It's in the internal carotid artery, and also some plaque in the external carotid artery. And what you can see is that based on ultrasound, you can really do a good assessment of geometry. However, uh, it is also known that it does not allow a perfect differentiation between fibrous and fatty uh, tissue. So that's why I think we need another technique, also based on ultrasound, but which can determine the composition of the plaque. And what we know is that, well, the, the vermal plaque, which has a lot of lipid content, lipids have a different uh, el elastic properties than fibrous tissue. So that's exactly what I'm aiming for uh, with the techniques I want, uh, want to show you today. So I want to introduce these three techniques, strain imaging, pulse wave velocity imaging, and shear wave elastography. And I'll start with strain imaging, and they all measure uh, parameters related to the elasticity of the artery. So strain imaging, well, yesterday there were also some talks about it, so just a short uh, explanation on the principle. So you have ultrasound images of a vessel in several states of deformation, and then for every image you subdivide the, the image in subregions and you search where they match best in the next image, and the change in distance between those regions uh, is the strain. Well, for cardiac imaging, uh, spectral tracking techniques are very common, so they use the B-mode information. However, for carotid arteries, you need to be more precise, you need to get more local information. So that's why we then switch, we first search for the global motion based on B-mode, and then we search based on the raw data, the RF signal, for the uh, very uh, local motion. And what you can see is that the signal contains much more information, the raw uh, signal contains much more information, it can also contains the phase information of the ultrasound signal. So we do it in two steps. 
Um, in, in a transverse plane, we do have an issue, however, with using raw data. We can only get good estimates along the ultrasound beam direction because in that direction, we have the phase information available. And to solve this issue, because we really need the 2D motion to describe the radial expansion of the artery, uh, we invented the following technique. It's called compound ultrasound strain imaging, in which we incentivize the tissue from multiple angles. So not just at zero degrees, but also at two additional angles. And then along each angle, we can get a good, uh, very accurate estimate of the motion. And by combining those estimates, we can then derive the full 2D uh, deformation of the artery with a really high accuracy. <laughs> to show you what difference this, this technique makes compared to single angle imaging, here's first an example in phantom. So this is a, a phantom made of PVA. It has a stiff outer layer and a soft inner layer. And if you then look at the echo image, it looks like this. So you can really see here's the reflection of the inner layer. And if you look at the, uh, at the compound map, it looks much better, especially in these regions where you need uh, the, also the, the horizontal component. You see that you can get a much better estimate of the strain. So this was our first proof of principle of this technique. And then we went to patients. So we uh, imaged uh, rotten arteries of patients which were scheduled for endotherectomy surgery. This is a surgery where the flag is excised. And the nice thing of this is that we can really first image uh, using our technique and then afterwards compare what we measure with the real plaque composition. So that's exactly what we did. And here's some examples. So this is a, a plaque which has a large lipid core. So it's over here. Um, it also has a very thin fibrous cap and also some macrophages, so I would classify this plaque as probable. And if we then look at our strain movie, and we can really see that in this top region, we have very high strains. You can also see the match with the histology, so there's calcifications here and there, and they are also here and there on the B mode. <coughs> We, of course, we then want to compare it with a fibrous plaque. So this is an example of a fibrous plaque. You can also see that it opened up during the, uh, ex during the endotherectomy surgery. So, but in general, you see that it contains a lot of collagen. And if we then look on the ultrasound, you can see that it hardly uh, deforms. Or on the strain map, you can see that it hardly deforms. We then look at the map from uh, peak systole to end diastole, then yeah, you can really see the difference between the two uh, situations. Last year, just at the end of the year, we finally published this uh, study in uh, YAC. So I'm really happy and it even made the front cover of, of this uh, journal. But we also published uh, an, a a large part of the study in stroke. And what we were able to show is that for these 34 patients, we could really get a significant difference in strain values uh, in, in the area of strain values with a high, with a, a value of strain above a certain uh, threshold. And it was really significant. Um, and what we saw is that we could get a sensitivity of 75% and a specificity of 86% to detect the atheromatous plaque. Of course, it is all really good. However, what I didn't tell you in this until now is that we also had to exclude a lot of uh, uh, data sets. We had to exclude about one out of five because we saw that the plaque moves out of the image plane during uh, imaging. So we really, this technique really suffers from out of plane motion. So that's what we're working on now. So we really want to extend this technique to 3D. And as you probably know, um, the frame rate of 2D ultrasound is quite limited. It's, it's approximately 100 hertz. 
So if we want to extend this to 3D, then we need a different uh, kind of way to record ultrasound. And there's a whole new uh, field uh, coming up. It's called ultrafast imaging. So conventional ultrasound acquires an image line by line, which leaves you with a frame rate of approximately 100 hertz per carotid artery. But if you then, uh, the new uh, way of ultrasound acquisition is emitting on the entire probe at one time. So you uh, activate the entire transducer at once, and then you can reconstruct an image uh, from this single transmit. So you can go up to 100 times faster imaging. So you can really go to 10,000 hertz. And the nice thing is that you can also do this in 3D, at least theoretically, because that's the next issue, there's no 3D ultrasound equipment yet for volumetric scanning of the carotid artery. Nevertheless, we want to see what the benefit is of going to 3D. So that's why we did some ultrasound simulations. And we uh, first started with a semi-3D approach. So it's similar to what Visual Sonics has on their system. So with the translational stage, we acquire slice by slice and then combine the images afterwards. And we simulated ultrasound data of a, a bifurcation model, so it's really pa patient-specific. It's, uh, it's based on the CT uh, acquisition. And we applied longitudinal motion to it, also based on uh, previous, li previous literature. And we compared how our technique worked in 2D and 3D. And then you get a result which looks like this. So this is the ground truth based on the model. So it's a really bi uh, biomechanical model. And these are the strains you expect. If you then look at our 2D technique and compare it to the 3D, then you can really see that the 3D tremendously outperforms the 2D technique. Of course, these were still simulations. So now we want to go to the uh, real uh, deal to experiments and then to patients, of course. So we started again with phantom experiments. So we made a PVA phantom with exactly the same geometry. Um, and we uh, put it into surrounding tissue and connected it to a pump. Then the only thing that is missing is an ultrasound system which can do this plane wave acquisition. And for that we now use a verisonic system it's a research-based uh, ultrasound platform. It's not uh, approved for clinical use yet. Um, <coughs> and we connected it to, uh, also to a translational stage. And at the moment, we are now doing this uh, study. So unfortunately, I, I have to stop on this uh, part of research here. But maybe another time I can present, or Stein Fekkes can present his work on this. But I, with the same setup, we can also do other experiments. Um, so we again have the phantom. Here's the probe. Um, but the, the nice thing of the Verisonics is that you can also connect a visual sonics probe to it. So you can also do high frequency uh, strain imaging. So that's what uh, two of our PGs are now researching. What is the benefit of high frequency ultrasound for uh, strain and also for flow imaging? So to summarize the strain imaging part, um, well, we saw that 2D combined strain imaging, uh, well, we, we developed it and we validated it in severely synodic patients. We also started extension to 3D. Uh, in simulation, we saw that it really improved our uh, estimates. But yeah, the next step is to go uh, to uh, experiments. experiments. We also implemented a high frequency version. Um, and we can really see that we get very high resolution results. However, we can also see that uh, penetration depth is still an issue. So maybe we should look at different arteries uh, that are smaller and more superficial uh, to, to apply these techniques. The next technique, which also uses uh, ultrasound ultra-fast imaging is pulse wave velocity imaging. You probably know pulse wave velocity uh, from 
other applications, so from the, the way it is now used in clinics. So normally you measure the arrival time of the pulse wave, so the wave which is generated by the heart uh, by, by measuring the arrival time difference uh, in the carotid artery and the femoral artery, and then dividing this difference in timing uh, by the distance between the two arteries gives you a measure of how fast this wave travels through the arterium tree. And uh, this, this speed is that, or this velocity is directly related to the elastic properties of the tissue. And when the artery becomes stiffer, the wave starts traveling faster. And with this, with ultrafast imaging, we can now do it locally. So we can measure in within one probe. <coughs> We can measure, measure on the left side of the probe, on the right side of the probe, and then measure how the wave propagates. So that's exactly what we've done. So we measure the local uh, deformation on each position. And you can really see a wave propagating. So this is in the phantom, but we also applied it in vivo. We use, again, using the, the visual sonics probe in plane wave acquisition mode, so that also explains why the uh, image looks uh, quality is a little bit less than uh, with focused imaging, and we uh, we track how the wave propagates over the wall. So here you can see the motion in the wall, or the the interframe motion through the wall, and you can really see the wave traveling from right to left, so from here to here. There's more people working on this technique, on pulse wave velocity, uh, especially the group from uh, Professor Conifago is doing a lot of work on this. However, what we're all facing now at the moment is that for some cases it works perfectly, but in a lot of cases you really suffer from the reflecting wave that comes back from the bifurcation. So we need to f find a way to solve this issue. And also a lot, in a lot of cases we see a big difference between a near and a far wall. So it's not really clear yet how to use this clinically. And it also uh, still needs to be figured out what the real predictive power is of local pulse wave velocity for cardiovascular events. So that, that brings me to the last technique, which is shear wave elastography. In shear wave elastography, it's, it's similar to pulse wave uh, phil uh, velocity imaging. But now instead of using the pulse wave generated by the heart, you generate a wave yourself. So you use ultrasound to induce motion in the tissue. So you focus the ultrasound on one spot and then you follow the generated wave over the uh, arterial wall. And you can do that again by ultrafast imaging. So that's shown over here. So we push in the center and the wave starts traveling outward. And again, the speed tells you something about the um, uh, elasticity of the, the arteries. Uh, I'll give you an overview of what I just presented. So first, I started with strain imaging, um, a technique to measure the deformation in the artery caused by the pulsa pulsation of the blood. Well, we developed it in 2D and validated it in symptomatic population. We also showed the potential of the technique in 3D using simulations. And um, we also showed how high frequency, uh, high frequency, high frame rate implement the implementation of the technique. It gives better resolution, but it's still restricted uh, to the common carotid artery. And it might even be better to do it in uh, smaller arteries, which are more superficial. The next step will be to implement the technique really on a, on a 3D uh, to really make an uh, implementation of the 3D multi-slice version and also evaluated performance in vivo. <coughs> but then pulse wave velocity imaging, well, we developed a high frequency version of it. Um, <coughs> the next step will be to uh, develop a more robust version, which can also deal with the reflecting waves. And what is also really important is to determine its predictive power for clinical events, for cardiovascular events. And then the final technique, push wave velocity imaging, so the technique where we uh, induce a wave in the tissue using ultrasound and then track it using uh, ultrafast acquisitions. We showed that uh, we gave a proof principle in vessel mimicking phantoms, but the next step will really, we need to 
improve the technique further and then also show that it can be applied in patients and we is able to detect lipid cores in real uh, arteries. So that concludes my talk. This is an overview of the people I, uh, we collaborate with. Um, well, thank you for uh, your attention. I hope there's still time for one or two questions. Thank you.